Make it do it makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. More than power, power, never. The computer, our modern day revolution. We use it every day from listening to music to editing photos to viewing video. But where did our first computers come from? People. I'm a computer, you're a computer, we're all computers. Computer was originally a job title that described people doing repetitive calculations. A lot of history went into this beauty, coming from inventions that were used to help people in mathematical calculations, like the abacus, Napier's bones, and the pascaline. All of these aided in addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. In 1822, Charles Babbage invented the steam-powered difference machine, which would be able to compute logarithm tables. Other inventions were machines that created punched cards. These punched cards were used for a gas bill, or as we know it today, for voting. One of these machines was the Hollerith Desk, which was created by Herman Hollerith. You may know him as the man who created IBM. IBM continued to develop the calculator for sale to businesses to help with financial accounting and inventory accounting. In 1944, IBM partnered up with Harvard to create the Harvard Mark I. It was the first programmable digital computer in the U.S. It was not purely electronic, though. It was constructed out of switches, relays, rotating shafts, and clutches. In 1937, the earliest attempts to build an all-electronic digital computer was built by J.V. Atenasov. This machine was the first to store data on a charge on a capacitor, which is how today's computers store information in their main memory, or RAM. Another major invention towards the model computer was the Colossus, built during World War II by Britain for the purpose of breaking the cryptographic codes used by Germany. In 1941, Conrad Zeus invented the Z3, his third machine. It was probably the first operational, general-purpose, programmable, software-controlled digital computer. 1943 to 1945, the ENIAC was created. It stood for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator. It was created by funding from the War Department promising that it could replace all women that were employed calculating the firing tables for the Army's artillery guns. By the end of the 1950s, computers were no longer one-of-a-kind hand-built devices. Although the ENIAC was unquestionably the origin of U.S. commercial computer industry, by 1955, IBM was selling more personal computers. Computers had been incredibly expensive because they required so much hand assembly. In 1976, the Apple I sold for only $600 as a do-it-yourself kit. In the 1990s, a university student would typically own their own computer. This was a result of the transformation of the microprocessor. In 1971, Intel was the first to develop the microprocessor. They were the first to succeed in cramming an entire computer onto a single chip. This began the revolution of the personal computer. MITS Altair was one of the first kit-based microcomputers. Although it wasn't the first microcomputer, it was the first of the industry. Soon after came the MSI 880. It was better built and had a better power supply, although it was very similar to the Altair. In 1977, processor technology designed the Soul computer. The Soul had a video terminal built in, only requiring a video monitor. It came in a very attractive case with walnut wood sides. The Soul became a very popular computer that influenced the design of future computers. Ah, now for the first true quote unquote personal computer the Apple II. Factory built, inexpensive, and easy to learn and use, provided with the most extensive set of software and low-cost floppy disks. The Apple II was also the first personal computer capable of color graphics and easy modem operation. Rivaling the Apple II was Radio Shack's TRS-80, selling for about $500 complete with video monitor, it took the personal computer market by storm. Using a fast Z80 processor, it used a cassette recorder for program and data storage. In 1983, Radio Shack later came out with the first practical laptop, the Model 100. You know what's next. Progression of technology means progression of the computer. As time goes on, the computer will become smaller and more compact until it resembles our laptops and desktops today. Growing up in the computer age, it's easy to forget where this great technology came from. 
Now that you know, I hope you can properly thank the inventors and inventions that indirectly bestowed upon you your new Apple MacBooks that our school lovingly gave us.